Hey guys, it's Delora Dapples here, and I have been doing a lot of yarn dyeing. Oh my gosh, well not yarn, but wool. I'm dyeing top, so yeah, I've been doing a lot of dyeing. So because I want to do a pound and a half worth of wool, and I want to spin it up for the Lestrange cloak. I've always wanted this really pretty lace jacket, and I think I will have one. A lot of the lace jackets that I see in stores and things, like the lace is very fragile. It's usually made from nylon, which isn't very warm. I have a lace jacket that I really like, and it's a great summer jacket, but you wouldn't wear it if you actually want to stay warm. Now, knitting it out of wool would make it more of a spring and fall jacket when it's still kind of nippy but not nippy enough for like a jacket jacket so anyway I dyed up this purple and this purple um, I still have half a thing of this that I need to spin but I'm holding off on it and I'm not spinning it because I really want to get started on my other stuff so I was convinced that I wanted a just two different colors on that jacket and that I wanted those colors to be gray and purple. Well, I very quickly changed my mind because I've done a lot of really great uh, spinning projects where I have a lot of colors going on. Like this looks predominantly blue because, well it was predominantly blue because you've got blue and you've got purple and you've got green and they all just kind of look into a blue and you can kind of sort of see a little bit of the green here and then some of the green goes into the purple here and makes very interesting colors this camera really doesn't give it justice um, you might want to check out my Instagram at Delora underscore dabbles and you'll you'll see something better and I just really like the tonal look of these socks that I've done so I've done both of these socks this week this these socks went by really fast. I cannot believe I finished these so fast. These are 100% BFL. These are BFL silk blend and they feel so cushy and I have to be honest I was not impressed with BFL while I was spinning and I didn't really feel the difference. Once I started knitting with it I was like oh BFL is very different. It has a very unique feel and texture to it. So yeah really happy with that. So because I really like the heathered look of this, I figured, okay, it'll be perfect in a jacket. But of course, I'm not going to wear something that's so blue and so bright. So I incorporated more gray into it. And so this is Corydale that I uh, experimented with, thank goodness, because these pattern repeats were so short. It's going to make a great, you know, self striping sock, perhaps, but not exactly what I want in a jacket. If you're gonna do a jacket those stripes would probably pool really badly like a variegated yarn and I'm not into that at all. So <clears throat> I went and I made the colors more saturated and lengthened the repeat and I still have the gray striping through the other colors and just a little bit of green. And I was like well this turned out really well and but I couldn't place my finger on why it still wasn't what I wanted. It still wasn't what I wanted because I knew I wanted to do something blended like this but I wanted to kind of cheat and not blend it because I'm talking about a large project that's gonna take a pound and a half of wool that is a pound and a half of wool that I'm gonna have to brush into roll lags and sometimes that gets very tedious and then I hate brushing Rolex but this look that I want can only be achieved that way so what do you do you bite the bullet and you just do what you know is gonna look best because this is a jacket that I'm gonna wear for a very long time this is something I want to last a very long time and something that I want it to be done the way I want it to look and that requires me to do extra work. Well, I'm already putting all of the hours into spinning the yarn and knitting the garment. Why not put the extra hours into actually blending the fiber? So that's what I'm doing. 
I have blend, I mean, I have dyed up all of the colors. So I have my green and I have my blue and I have my purple already dyed up. Currently, I am drying the gray and dyeing the black. And the black is almost done dyeing, actually. I should go in there and probably turn the oven off and let it cool and all that so that um, I can begin the process of... I like to let the wool completely cool down before I rinse off the excess because you just really don't want to shock wool. And Paul Worth is so cushy and delicious, I know it'll felt really badly. So yeah, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna blend it through the blending board all different colors and get a nice heathered look and get really long tonal variations, very nice long tonal variations like in this sock. And well, this sock is is a better example of tonal variation, I think. <laughs> For some reason my camera doesn't want to pick up the subtleties of purple ever. It really doesn't even want to pick up the subtleties of the purple and the blue here. It all just looks blue. You can't even see the purple. So, anywho, that's the dye project I've been on. And I might decide to, at some point, combination spin the two of these. Since they are so similar, this one's obviously a lighter color, but combination spinning them might be really interesting. And it might give it a nice um, fractal look. We'll see. And I might do like a shawl or something out of it. Who knows? What I'm also working on, speaking of variegated yarns, I am finally working on this tank top and I think I've shown this I haven't I haven't been working on it much because it's a pain in the butt as you can see some of the variegation has pooled in an effort to prevent it from pooling I cut the yarn you can see that it has pooled here quite badly right across here quite badly and up here not so much that's because I am actually striping. I cut my yarn supply in half and balled them into their own balls. And now I am striping them. I'm doing two rows of one ball, two rows of another, just so that I can keep the pattern repeats different enough to... I might actually go from doing one row of one and one row of another because they still look a little pooly, but not nearly as bad as if I had just left it the same because I don't really want those columns and waves of color I don't like that pooling so that has become quite a pain in the butt because I'm not the best at carrying my yarns around let me just show you that so here's where I have carried the yarns back and forth across each other and you can already see that I'm going to be doing a bit of mending and melding here because you can definitely see the seam line. I don't like that you can definitely see the seam line. And on the inside, looks quite nasty. Looks quite nasty. So I will be working on trying to do better with that. It's all a learning process, I guess. But I do now have three pairs of hand spun hand knit socks because we can't forget this one from the beginning of quarantine. One of these socks was knit in the winter time, just in my spare time, and then the other one was um, completely done in quarantine. So they count as my quarantine socks. So not bad, not bad at all. And also considering I knit an entire sweater, whew, I have been doing quite a lot of knitting. I've been doing so much knitting, in fact, that my arms are telling me to stop. So I think I'm going to focus on spinning, and I'm going to pick up a crochet project, and that's going to be a surprise. It's going to be my first time crocheting with my hand spun yarn. I have not crocheted with my hand spun yarn at all. So and I hadn't even considered it, but I also haven't crocheted in years, so I think it'll be really good to 
give my arms and my fingers even get a little stiff whenever I knit for too long now because I've just I think I've just completely blown my my muscles my knitting muscles so maybe my crochet muscles will be a bit different <laughs> we'll see they might be so similar that I still need to stop and take breaks with crochet in which case spinning will need to be my predominant um, craft and time occupier so anywho, I have been spinning this since I don't really want to start a wheel project since the rest of my evening is going to be pretty busy tonight. Um, I'm going to go have a picnic. But anywho, I already have this dyed and dried and my gray and black wools will be dyed and dried by tomorrow. That tomorrow I plan on spinning basically the whole day brushing the Rolex. I plan on brushing all of the Rolex at once and getting it over with so that I have everything that I need and I won't need to be like, oh right, I spun through all my Rolex, now I have to blend more. Uh, just blend them all at once and not worry about it. So that's going to be quite the challenge. <laughs> And like I said, I'll probably be spending like literally all day on it because it is a pound and a half. I might surprise myself and get it done sooner. Who knows? But that is what it's looking like. So. <laughs> all right. I think that that is everything. No, it's not actually. I have one more thing. Ta da Look how pretty. I am a notebook slut, like total notebook slut. Um, I saw that they were having a sale on paper blanks and paperblanks.com has a bunch of really pretty. I have others that are over there and I'm not even going to show you because I'll just talk about that the whole time. But this is my fiber arts journal. I decided that since I have a tarot meditation spirituality journal um i really need to have a spinning and knitting journal because sometimes i forget for instance what circumference my swift is my swift is 67 inches around which is 1.86 yards so whenever i wind a skein and count the loops i need to multiply those loops by 1.86 to get my yardage and sometimes I'm like oh wait and like you know I'm count I count up the loops I know how many loops are in a skein but then I'm like wait a second I forgot how I, I, I forgot how many like yards around my skein winder is I also have the grist formula on here I have the ratios on my Cassandra wheel because sometimes like I hadn't spun for so many months when this quarantine was first starting that I forgot what my wheel ratios were. I forgot what temperature I usually set my oven to when I dye yarn and, and all of these things. Like I just forgot so much and was like, wow, I really need to make a better effort of writing these things down so that if I go maybe even years, I can pick up this pretty journal and be like, oh yeah all of my stuff is in here. I also have a really bad habit of just writing down my dye recipes in random notebooks that just happen to be laying around and then I can't find them later. So I have transcribed all of my dye recipes from my latest notebook and as I find older notebooks I will be <laughs> putting them in here and maybe even taping or paper clipping in some of my spinners control cards when I'm done with the yarn because I do like to tie my spinners control card to the actual yarn and then once I'm out of that yarn I kind of throw the control the, the spinners control cards for those projects into a box it's that's got all my knitting needles in it it's like they they would be better served if they were with my other stuff. So, yeah. It's hard not to feel inspired when you have such a bougie little journal like this. So, yeah. That's what's up. That's what I've been up to. And I hope that you guys have found 
a good way for you to occupy your time. I know for me, I am a very nervous, anxious person and I need distraction, so I've been ultra productive. You don't necessarily need to be ultra productive to be taking care of yourself mentally and physically, so I hope that whatever works best for you, you've been able to find a bit of a rhythm in all of this chaos and that you are doing well. And until next time, happy dabbling and bye-bye.